All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is one that I am really excited to be doing, and it's another one that's due to the generosity of uh, a viewer and fellow knife enthusiast. So huge, huge thank you to Ethan Walker. Um, on Instagram, he goes as Overkill EDC, so definitely check him out, especially if you like this type of traditional knife. Um, he's got lots of cool pictures of those. So again, huge, huge thank you to Ethan Walker and known as Overkill EDC on Instagram for sending a huge, huge number of um, Winchester knives for me to check out and do a video on. And this is one, another one where I don't own any Winchester knives, but it's something that I'm interested in. I've seen a lot of them online and have wanted to check them out. Um, but just haven't gotten a chance. So one more time, uh, I guess probably I'll say it again at the end of the video, but huge, huge thank you to Overkill EDC, aka Ethan Walker, for sending these knives along. And as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight knives. So I'm pretty sure that this is the most knives I've had as the subject of a video at one time. And I did kind of go back and forth on how I should do this video. I considered doing just the black box knives. I considered, and then the um, the others separately. Uh, I considered doing these special shields separately. Um, but I ended up on doing them all together. And really the reason for that is because I want to kind of just showcase these knives and um, you know their maker. And so from what I can tell, these knives were all made by Queen Cutlery. Um, so they're all from, I believe, 87, uh, 1987 to 2003, um, when Queen was, you know, still making knives, first of all. Uh, they did go out of business in 2018, um, but also notably from when Bill Howard, who is now, you know, the, the head of GEC, was the head cutler at Queen. So, um, you know, from an era of Queen Knives where they were really kind of, I think, at their best or at least, you know, really making high-end knives that are, you know, really at or, or around the level that GEC is now making knives. Um, so that, that's kind of an interesting thing about this group of eight knives is they're all from that era and all really good examples of that era, in my opinion. So let's start from the oldest of these. And first of all, as I said, these are what is called the black box series. And it's literally, they come in a black box here. Um, so this is a dog leg jack. It's a little tough to get out of here. As you can see, they do come with this really nice, perfectly fitted um, kind of velvet type uh, box. So I'll get this out and set the box to the side. But here it is, and all of these black box knives are gonna have really similar bone handles. They're, they're what I would call black bone. Um, I, I wasn't able to find the exact name that was used for these, but I believe that it's a Rogers jigged style bone. I'm not 100% sure on that, um, but it is a black jigged bone. Although, as you can see, there's, there's a little bit of brown on the edges here. Um, but opening up the blades, it does have half stops. And these are, I believe, all 1095 steel, the black box ones. Um, so this is model number 2857. And as you can see, it was made in 1987. Um, unlike GEC that uses a, a little different um, tank stamp number system, these Winchesters just have the date right on them here. Um, so uh, very nice action on this one. Nice and smooth. You know, no blade play or anything even for being what is it, almost 40 years old now? I guess 35. Um, very nice action on that main blade. You can see some slight gaps, but but pretty well, well put together there. Um, and then it has a pen secondary. The pen secondary has a stronger pull to it. Um, you can see it has the Winchester trademark there, uh, but still, nice and snappy as you can see. And I just wanted to, to give you some um, comparisons to GEC knives for as many of these as I could. This is the GEC number 56. It's also a dogleg jack, but you can see there are some differences. This has rounded top bolsters and bottom bolsters, whereas this has a kind of flat top bolster and then more of a teardrop bottom bolster. Um, so really cool knife and um, I think a good comparison to the GEC, this is a GEC that I got secondhand. 
um, but also has you know some slight gaps and um, pretty similar in construction to be honest. So that's the first there of this black box series. Moving on to the second one, as you can see is written here, this is a gun stock. So this one doesn't have the um, fitted velvet thing there, but I'm sure that just fell out at some point. Um, again, this is an older knife. You can see uh, made in 1988. So again, 33 years old, I guess, 32. Um, so it's an older knife. No surprise that that velvet came out in that time. Um, but this one has a little bit of pitting, as you can see there. Um, and the looks like maybe they tried to uh, polish that away um, before Ethan got this, or maybe he did, I'm not sure. Uh, but this is the number 2851. And this is a really classic gunstock pattern. So it's kind of a medium uh, towards smaller gunstock pattern. I'll give you some comparisons right off the bat here. This is the GEC number 44, so you can see it's a good bit bigger. And then also GEC has done the 22, which is the smaller gun stock from GEC. And it's a good bit smaller, although a little bit wider actually than the Winchester. So just a, a quick comparison there um, between some GEC gun stocks and the Winchester gun stock. But again, it has that same really dark brown that they call black jig bone, which I think is a, a nice look to it. Um, nice jigging pattern again, very kind of old school looking jigging and um, well made. Some gaps again on the between the springs and the liners, but pretty well put together. Nice uh, transitions between the bolsters and the um, covers and real good action. I'd say about a six on that main blade. Nice snap and maybe about a five on the pen, so a little lighter, uh, opposite of that previous one, but good action and um, nice and easy to get to. Again, 1095 steel, I believe, on this, um, and no blade plate either, so really cool to see that. One thing here, I think you'll be able to see it a little easier on this knife than some of the others, hopefully. Um, these knives do have pin shields, um, so you can see that that shield is pinned Hopefully, yeah, you can see that pin in there. Um, so that's something you know if you've watched a lot of my videos. I really, really prefer a pin shield, and it's nice to see that. Queen did pin a lot of their shields. Um, but we'll move on to the next one here, and this one is one that GEC does not have a comparable model for. Uh, and it's somewhat of an unusual model. I think maybe, again, a little bit old school. This is a coffin jack. Um, so the coffin jack is typified by these squared off bolsters here at the bottom and the shape that you know is reminiscent of a coffin a little bit wider in the middle and then you know has the the um, thinner top wider bottom with this shape to it here uh, so coffin jack which GEC has not made a coffin jack yet but I think it would be really cool if they did uh, one thing you notice here on this knife is it does have this filled in secondary um, blade well. Uh, it's not filled in the whole way up to that pen blade, but that's something you don't see a whole, whole lot of on knives where they, you know, extend this spring around. It's, it's not extended around. It's actually like, you know, the full width of the knife here um, up so that it fills some of that blade well uh, on the secondary uh, blade. But um, very cool to see a coffin jack. I think it's a cool pattern. Um, it has a spear main blade. Really nice pull on that. I'd say it's maybe a six and a half towards a seven, but very smooth. Uh, this one is made in 87. So I guess I should have shown this one before the gun stock there, but it is pattern number 2921 and really nice snap. Like this is some high quality snap on this knife. Um, then the pen, or yeah, the pen blade has similar six and a half ish, maybe six um, pull. And again, nice snap. Um, very, you hear that snap? Very snappy on this knife. So this is one that I think is one of the nicer of the bunch, to be honest. 
really snappy, nice action on that. Um, and, you know, maybe not 100% perfect, not 100% seamless on these back springs, but pretty close. Um, some gaps there, really nice though. And this really interesting, um, so normally you would call a, a bolster that has a line like this threaded. I'm not actually even sure what you would call this type bolster. And I'm sure someone will know. Um, I couldn't find it. I didn't see anything that described this bolster in particular when I was looking this knife up. Um, but it is a really interesting look. It's something that, uh, again, GEC has never done this type of bolster either, as far as I, I recall. So um, some really cool things about this knife. And I actually am considering trying to find one of these, although all of these knives uh, are becoming more and more difficult to find and more and more expensive. But this is the last of the black boxes and another pattern actually that GEC has never done. This is a sow belly. Um, so the sow belly is a pattern that Case has done, Case does do currently. I don't own one, um, but I have owned a Rough Rider version of the sow belly. Um, I don't currently though. So uh, this is, you know what, actually, now that I'm thinking about that, I do own a sow belly from Rough Rider, but it is put away. It's the Moonshiner version. So sorry, I'm not going to show it here. But GEC has not done a sow belly yet. And it's one of the patterns that a lot of people have and are requesting from GEC. But again, same type bone on this one. Uh, pretty similar construction with the back springs and, and slight gapping. Um, but you can see it's kind of a serpentine stockman here and it does have three blades. The main blade is a clip point, kind of a sweepy uh, clip point, sweeping, um, but it is not, uh, no half stop, and is a little bit lighter pull than the previous knives. I would say maybe like a four, something like that, but nice and snappy. And then it has a sheet foot, same deal, no half stop, and a little lighter pull than the others. And then, the spade blade. So classic, you know, Stockman setup. Uh, same deal, about a four lighter pull, but good snap. And the model number on this is 3949, and it was made in 1989. So lots of nines there. Um, but a very cool knife. Again, one that I think is uh, I'm a little bit envious of. Um, really cool. Who knows if GEC, I'm sure they will make a, a sow belly at some point, but who knows when. And I think that this is, you know, pretty comparable. Um, I am going to show a Stockman for the next knife. So uh, I think I'm just going to pull it out now to, to give you a quick comparison. Um, this is the only Stockman I currently have from GEC. Now they do have, or they have made some Stockmans that are a little closer in size to the two here um, from Winchester, but this is just the only one I have. And this is the number, ooh, wrong blade, number 828318. Um, so it's the 82 pattern Dixie stock knife, and uh, it has a little bit different blade uh, shape set up, but somewhat similar. You know, it's a serpentine stockman, it's just not a sow belly style. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe a little bit better with the gaps and stuff, but I think that these Winchesters are, are really nice either way. So I'll leave this one out here, put this one away. And we can move on to the non-black box knives. So this is a normal Winchester branded knife uh, with the Winchester shield. Um, this one is a pattern number 3940 and it was made in 1995. Uh, this one has Rogers red jig bone. Um, this one is a small stockman. I would definitely call this a smaller size stockman. Has the classic blade shapes though. You saw that kind of Turkish style clip point or um, muskrat clip point, and then a sheep foot, and then a spade blade. And uh, good snaps, I would say about a five on those. Um, the main blade here, to be honest, is a little rough opening and closing. Um, I, you know, plan to, to put a little bit of oil on all these knives before I send them back just so that they, you know, fare well in the um, shipping process, um, but maybe that'll help with that. Uh, either way, a, a nice knife here. I wish that I still had the, the other 82 that I used to have, which was the um, Indian paintbrush jig bone. 
uh, which was very, very similar in color and jigging style to this. This is a little bit more of like a polished um, style jigging, but very similar in look and color and jigging to the GEC Indian paintbrush bone. Um, but this one, I believe I wrote it down here is stainless, yes. Yeah, this is a stainless steel knife. Um, so a little different than those previous black box ones. Um, something that I think they moved more into later on, um, being that this is a little later knife, but not too much. And then we'll move on to the next one here. This is the, uh, this is a large knife, as you can see. Um, and this is in the Rifle Shield series. So um, this one actually does not have a pin shield, which I was really interested when I when um, Ethan told me he was sending this one to see whether it would or wouldn't, because I was kind of, you know, it would be surprising to me if they would, did pin the shield in a sense, because it is so big and probably hard to fit correctly with a pin. Um, but it is not pinned as far as I can tell, and I'll show you that. Hopefully this blade is a pretty strong pull. Um, but yeah, you can't really see that there's any pin going through the liners there for that shield. But as you can see, this is um, an elephant toenail or sunfish. They actually call it a rope sunfish. Um, so I'm not exactly sure why they call it that, but my guess is, and I'll show you, I'll get out the GEC knife that I wanted to compare this to now. My guess is that it's called a rope sunfish because there's this kind of, um, I, I hate to, I hesitate to call it mythology, but maybe kind of like a, a mythology in uh, traditional knives that some of these knives are made uh, with these wide, wide blades like this GEC 46 Whaler um, so that People on oil rigs, which is, you know, more fitting for knives like these that are made in Titusville, Pennsylvania, or even on uh, ships, well, they would have to cut these really, really thick ropes. And um, supposedly these knives with, you know, kind of long, but mostly thick blades uh, were made that way so that they could actually set it on the rope and then kind of hammer it through the rope to cut the rope. Um, so I'm guessing that that's why uh, this was called a rope sunfish. Um, and that's the same idea here. Uh, this is a GEC, again, number 46 whaler um, from the rendezvous in ooh, 2018, I think. Yeah, 2018. Um, and kind of same idea. This is my closest pattern to a sunfish. I have had the GEC version of the sunfish before. This one is, I don't know, maybe more of an elephant toenail, I guess. Uh, but closest closest I could come to a comparison there. Um, so, you know, big knives for sure, definitely a little bit uh, heavy and large in the pocket, but if you need a bigger knife, if you're hunting or, you know, I guess on an oil rig or on a ship and cutting big ropes, maybe this is a good option for you. But one thing, this has this really pointy style uh, spear point that a lot of GEC knives actually have had this style spear point, notably for me, the um, number 25, uh, which is a, a smaller knife, but this kind of like abrupt curve, uh, and then a straight edge towards the point on the, the belly or on the edge, and then another abrupt curve and straight, at, uh, straight spine towards the point on the spine. It's kind of an interesting spear point and, um, you know, one that, that I think is pretty cool looking uh, and pretty historical too. You do see this type of spear point on um, older knives, on vintage knives and things like that. Uh, but this is the number 29110 and a half. Uh, the, the age is actually covered, the, the production date is actually covered by the bolsters but when i was looking this up i found that i believe it was made in 1995 so moving on a little bit in time and um i also found that this was probably called burnt orange bone which makes sense it is uh, a dark orange a deep orange i guess you might say and a little bit burnt looking um but it has nice jigging on that bone also and you know well put together a little bit of gaps as you can see um between both the bolsters and the liners and the liners in the spring. But it has honestly not as strong a pull as you might suspect on a bigger knife like this. It's probably right around a five, nice snap. Uh, the pen blade's a, a, 
a five, but it gets real strong there towards the end. And that pen blade has a similar style shape to it, a little bit less like a pen uh, blade, normal pen blade, and a little bit more like a stubby version of that clip point, or I'm sorry, uh, spear point. So that's one from the Rifle Shield series. And this is one from the Buffalo Head series. So this is a pretty cool shield. It's uh, it's made to look like a buffalo head. Um, there's a lot of lines on it to the point where I, I've always kind of thought that it was a little bit, um, a little weird looking, but also a little cool looking. Uh, one that I've actually always kind of wanted to see this shield in person to see what I thought of it. And and I don't really think that my um, opinion has changed too much. It is pretty, pretty dang cool, but also pretty weird too. Um, so this one is definitely a sunfish, I would call, and that's what they call it on uh, the site here. I'll talk about where I, I got a lot of this information in a second. But this shield also, and this one has a pretty strong pull on that secondary, is as far as I can tell, not pinned. Um, so not a huge, huge surprise on that, uh, this type of shield that has... Um, this kind of like lines on it sometimes is not pinned because they want to put it in after they've polished the bone. Uh, the reason for that being that if they put this in before they've polished the bone, like finished the bone, then they would polish the shield also and it would polish off some of those lines. So it makes sense to me that it's not pinned, but this is the number 29120BH. And as you can see, hopefully you have to kind of move it there. This one was made in 1998. Um, so, uh, it has a double pull here. Uh, I actually broke my nail trying to use the nail nick. And I think the reason for that is because the nail nick is in this cut swedge. I generally dislike nail nicks and cut swedges. Um, it's something that gets done a lot, uh, but I generally don't prefer it. And it's a really, really shallow nail nick. You can do it or I can do it now that I have a you know, pretty short nail because I broke my nail trying it earlier. Um, but it is a very shallow nail nook, so I would use that long pull instead. Pretty strong pull, I'd say like a six-ish, um, you know, and again, strong pull on that pen blade. Uh, this is a pretty typical, but kind of fat uh, spear point, which is typical for a sunfish to have that fat spear, uh, like you saw on the GC46 Whaler. Uh, but strong pull on the pen blade, and it's a very, again, kind of fat pen blade. Um, so, you know, to match the main blade. Uh, this one is what they call, um, so there are a couple versions of this. This is either, again, burnt orange, which is, I believe, what this is. Um, some knives also call, had a honey bone, but I'm pretty sure that this is a burnt orange bone. Um, so moving on to the last one here, and this one I'm going to have another uh, GEC Comparison for, this is from the Cartridge Shield series. Um, and this is a 4570 cartridge. Uh, so kind of an old school cartridge. I certainly have never used it. Maybe people still do, I'm not sure, but I have never used it. This one is is definitely honey, honey jig bone. Um, so it's a little bit lighter than the previous two with those orange uh, jig bones. But this is what they call, and, and this is what the website said, a spline whittler. Um, I, I don't know if, I don't know what spline means. Um, GEC calls this type of knife a split back whittler, and it's what I've seen others calling this type of construction. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But they call it a spline whittler. It's a three bladed knife. It has the main blade, and it's not a super strong pull. I'd say about a five on that. Uh, the main blade runs on two springs here, um, two springs that come together. And it is a, a spear point, really classic spear point, nothing really unusual about this one. Um, it has a uh, mass strike nail nick, which is a pretty big nail nick. I do like that. It is, uh, you know, there is a cut swedge, but it's not really in the cut swedge, so I don't mind that too much. This one is the most recent. Uh, it is the model number 190122, and it was made in 2003. Um, GEC was established in 2006, so this was towards the end of the time that Bill Howard would have been at Queen. Um, then on the sec on the other end of the knife, there are two secondary blades. So one secondary, and then a second secondary, and you can see that they are actually 
the same blade shape. So it's something where this is something you see a lot on whittlers. I think it's done this way because on a whittling knife, you tend to dull these smaller knives pretty quickly. But I do like, in comparison, what GEC did on their most recent knife, the knife that is um, just pretty much finished uh, production when I was filming this video, and is, again, a split back whittler, which is the number 38 English whittler. Um, on this one, they went with a Warncliffe main blade, but then to go, f uh, you know, along with those secondaries, there is a pen blade. Um, this, they actually have half stops on the GEC. Uh, but the other secondary is kind of a small sheep foot or almost a coping, probably more a small sheep foot. Um, so I do think, you know, it, it gives you a little bit more versatility. Uh, I don't do a whole, whole lot of whittling, but um, if I did, I feel like I would like having a different blade shape rather than two of the same. Now, another thing here, you notice that the GEC main blade is not filling the whole handle. Um, some people complained about that, but it's one thing that I actually kind of like because it makes the tip sit a little lower in the frame uh, as compared to if the blade is longer. Now this is actually pretty good. It's not very close to being proud, but when you have those two blades, it does create, uh, on, this, on the other side, it does create a relatively wide gap that sometimes your finger can go down in and you can see that it can get caught on that tip even though the tip isn't very close to proud. Um, so that's kind of one downside to split back whittlers. But one thing that I thought was pretty impressive about this knife is that it has a pretty wide split back. So I'm going to show you a comparison here. Um, the, the center liner on the Winchester made by Queen is a, a good bit wider than that on the GEC. Uh, it is also brass rather than the steel of the GEC. And at least my example of the GEC, and I have a, a, the other version on the way, so we'll see what that one's like, but at least my example, um, this this split back, the, the liner in the center, sits pretty high. It's, it's definitely catchable with your finger. Um, whereas on this one, it's really not. It, it sits, you know, maybe like, I don't know, less than a millimeter high, um, but it's not something where your finger is really going to catch on that. So that that's a nice thing. It's, uh, you know, interesting to see that. Um, and I want to open up this and show here that this cartridge um, shield is also, I believe, not pinned. Um, or I'm sorry, is pinned. There is a, a pin um, in there. Yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It's definitely tough to see down in there. I wish I had better lighting for that, but I believe that this one is pinned as compared to those two previous. So um, kind of cool to see that kind of comparison of quality between a knife made, um, you know, 18 years ago and a knife made two weeks ago, something like that. Um, both under the, the supervision of the same head cutler, um, but at different outfits. And so that kind of brings me to the last point that I wanted to make in this video is that all of these knives, although they are um, Winchester knives, uh, they are made by Queen as far as I can tell um, they are actually knives that were made for or produced by Bluegrass Cutlery. So Bluegrass Cutlery is a, a business in Ohio, um, which apparently has never made knives themselves. They're not a manufacturer, but they do own some brands and one of those being Winchester. Um, so through the years, especially while Queen was still around, they had a lot of their knives made by Queen. But um, a lot of the information that, that I've you know talked about in this video, I got from the Bluegrass Cutlery website. Uh, so <laughs> not the like most modern website for sure, um, but has some info on these knives that they've done in the past. Uh, it almost seems like they, they act like you can still order them, which I highly, highly doubt. Um, the only way that would actually be the case is if um, they had like a lot of new old stock of these knives. Uh, if that is the case, it's interesting um, that they still have them and, and they haven't sold yet. 
although some of the prices are a little expensive. For example, I believe the one I was looking at that they kind of acted like you could still buy was this one. And I think that the price that they were showing was like 230 or $240. So that's a good bit more than um, a typical GEC knife, uh, at least currently. And um, it's something where, you know, maybe that it's, it's a worthwhile price because if they do actually still have them, and again, I don't know if they actually do still have new old stock, um, but it might become collectible. And that moves me into another point here. I do think that these Winchester knives are going to become more and more sought after. Like I said earlier in the video, um, they are getting already harder to find and more expensive since Queen has closed, closed down. And I think that that will probably continue. Um, I think especially these black box Winchesters, because they just seem to be a little bit more highly thought of, highly sought after, and they're really cool. Not only that, but as you can see, they have done some patterns in these black box Winchesters that GEC has not done yet. So if someone is looking for one of those patterns, they might have to go with one of these black box Winchesters, at least for now until GEC uh, does make them. Um, but again, I think that these are really cool. It's something where, again, this video, making this video and looking at these knives and, and you know, researching them has made me want to get one of the black box, uh, Winchesters for sure, especially the coffin jack. And, uh, one last time, I really, really appreciate when people send knives for review. Um, I can't even imagine, I don't know, but it would be probably well more than a thousand dollars maybe even well more than a couple thousand dollars to get all of these knives for me to have purchased all of these knives for review and that's just not something i can do um it's just not something that that works for me uh financially um and i so it really is valuable to the channel valuable to me and really appreciated um by me when people are willing to send knives for for a review um or for making a video even if it's not a review more of just showcasing them like this is uh and this is an extreme example of that again i don't think i've ever done a video on eight knives at once let alone eight knives that were loaned to me so a huge huge thank you to ethan walker and again check out his instagram if you're on instagram um it's overkill edc uh, and if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel and um, hit the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. Also check out my Instagram and Facebook and such at Knife Thoughts and my website knifethoughts.com where I post articles on knives like this and knife related topics. I do plan to get back to posting more articles also. And uh, last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.